change the hearts of men when they realize the one common fact. When you see the infinite light of God and the tremendous power of God in that, it will change your whole being. It will change your heart. Your heart will be a pure gold, knowing that. Then you can love one another, really, because you know the source from whence they come. Then the brotherhood of man, and only then can come the fatherhood of God when he changed the hearts of men. You can try to do it by politics. You can try to do it by the force of political power in the name of religion. It has all been tried for ages to bring about this saving of world consciousness. But has not will not work because it will only come when you change the hearts of men. Only then. You cannot force people to do anything. But when the love of God percolates through their being and his infinite light guides them and the love of God in that light is felt in their hearts then the hearts of men are changed, then the world will be saved. Because worldly consciousness will be superseded by that great infinite love years ago, the master went to Washington, and he talked to President Coolidge, who was, as you know, a man of few words, and that disarmament was involved, and they discussed disarmament, and the master said to Cal, he said, isn't it so, sir, that even though you take the battleships away from them, and the guns, and the weapons of war, isn't it so that man will still fight with stones, or with his fists? Cal says, that's right. That's a fact. You cannot do that. You cannot make people do it. But when you change their heart, and they feel peace of God that you feel right now, that will do it. That will give them a realization of the underlying unity of God's presence. And so worldly consciousness must be superseded by the love of God. The consciousness of wine and sex and money is too strong, too strong to be overcome except when it is superseded by the love of God. When you do that, then, then they will fall off. But only then. Those forces are too strong. When you feel, when you feel in your heart the passion of God and his great love, those things take a secondary place, such as the power of God's great love. That's why those two commandments can then be followed. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy strength, and with all thy heart, and with all thy might. Then you feel in your heart the great love of God. That's the first thing. How can any other thing remain there? It cannot. Secondly, second great commandment is, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You can then love one another because you know they come from the one eternal source. Now the Bible substantiates this, the scriptures substantiate this. I like to give a few Bible references because for this reason it's very satisfying to myself. But also, remember that Bawaji gave to Sri Yukteswarji the great task of showing by parallel references of the Gita, of the Bible, of all scriptures, by showing by parallel references the underlying unity, the underlying unity, the universality of religion. If we can do that, then people of all religions, and especially those here who are the Christian nation, if they can see it's the same thing as was taught in the Gita ages ago, then they will realize the underlying truth which will save the world. And so just one or two more references and then I'm through. In, in the ninth chapter, the ninth discourse of the Gita, it says, those who worship me and meditate on me without any other thought, God is not mocked. You have to worship him unconditionally. There cannot be any reservations because he knows before you start. He is behind your thought even. So he says, those who worship me, meditate upon me without any 
other son. To those ever steadfast devotees, I secure safety and supply all their needs. I carry their burden. Isn't that wonderful? We say the same thing in our Bible. Jesus said, come unto me. Come unto me, the Christ consciousness, not the body. Come unto me, and I will give thee rest. You will find rest only in the Christ within. If you want to do your part to save the world, find that first. Find that. Then you can help and give to others. Come unto me, and I will give thee rest. And the Gita also says, I notice in my reference, I shall free thee from all sin. Imagine all sin of ages, of incarnation, cannot stay in the light of God. Meditate, you will find it out. Now isn't that worth striving for? Look at the things we've laid up. The impulses we bring with us, laden impulses which keep bothering us, bringing up into worldly consciousness these things we don't want, those will be taken away. For it says, I shall free thee from all sin, greed not. God is most wonderful. We don't appreciate what we've got. That's all. And so in conclusion... The world will be saved, as I have said, by turning from the changeable, transient, worldly consciousness of this drama of life of God to the unchanging eternal consciousness, the Christ consciousness within. We all can do it. We all have that natural love of God in our heart. The thing is, we have to water it a little bit. We have to cultivate it. We have to give a little effort. Then we can do our...